When we speak to scientists who are looking at implementing massively parallel sequencing, they generally tell us about infrastructure challenges and the level of adoption of the method. Most of my colleagues uh, are still afraid of using massively parallel sequencing because they are so used dealing with capillary electrophoresis results. I think the reason that lots of forensic scientists don't yet see massively parallel sequencing as a routine technology is because it's still a very different workflow. I think as certain labs start to actually implement it into casework, as it starts to go to court, which it will do this year, then I think you'll see a lot of that reticence start to drop. Laboratories who are stepping into the MPS arena right now can benefit from the knowledge we've generated. Several labs have been using the technology for quite a while now. What they see is that the potential of this technique is mind-blowing. The technology gives us the opportunity to analyze much more markers than we are able to analyze with CE at one time. If you have only 10% usable information, that's still good enough to go into a database. If you have only 10% out of 16 markers, that's nothing. Now with massively parallel sequencing, we can really look at the actual sequence of the short tandem repeats, and that really adds discriminatory power to this kind of analysis that really pushes us to the next level in mixture analysis. We'll be able to get more confident information about the number of contributors to those mixtures uh, because for the markers that we're using there's more alleles available to us through NGS than through our conventional system. Uh, with capillary electrophoresis uh, you're really lucky if you can pick up 10% minor contribution of a single source in a complex mixture. Uh, with massively parallel sequencing, uh, a 1% uh, minor contribution is absolutely no problem. Most of the samples that we're actually analysing are bad quality. MPS can help you even obtain some full genetic profile, STR profile, even on the most degraded thing. The ancestral or phenotypic information would make a difference in, in many cases. In, where you look for criminals that are not in the database, um, where you cannot make a link purely based on STR information between a crime stain and a person X. We're able to look at so many different types of application at the same time, from uh, methylation assays through to metagenomics and the traditional sequencing of STRs and SNPs. And it's that diversity that is really useful to us. There are still a lot of things that we will be able to do in the future that we really cannot do now, and that makes it really exciting. We are starting to see now people validating and making operational plans to implement. Once the method is validated, you can use it on real casework, and we expect that we'll be able to send uh, genetic profiles to the national French database. That would be the first time in France at least that some data obtained by another technology than CE-based technologies will be um, provided to the database. We should be able to have more evidential samples analysed with, with an actual outcome. For my own laboratory we, we've closed a number of actual forensic investigations uh, using massive, massively parallel sequencing and there will be many more of them in, in the next year. The last 12 months have seen some significant advances in the transition of massively parallel sequencing from a visionary method that could potentially have utility in the lab to a real opportunistic tool that labs can take advantage of and use to influence the actual casework that they're conducting. That, I think, is incredibly exciting. <laughs>